All right, welcome to this progress in learning video. I have today Sunny Sabini. I'm excited to talk with her. Uh, Sunny, I'm just going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself first. Uh, I really like what you're up to in your business, and I want uh, folks to, to hear about it. Great. Thank you, George. Um, so my name is Sunny Sabini, and I'm here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I work with co-founders and business partners who are in progressive businesses, and I help them work through conflicts, obstacles, increase the collaboration and synergy in their partnership. And in the process, we usually end up expanding their individual, their interpersonal, their organizational capacity. Yeah, so yeah, I, very, very cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and, and uh, you have a, a new framework that I don't know if uh, we have time to share it or whatever, but I certainly will give people links sure. uh, to your website and other places and anywhere that would be helpful. But I hope that this video and those of you listening on the podcast will will get some encouragement about how authentic business can be done. I hope that you all will kind of walk away be, being able to kind of apply some of these insights into your business as well. So, um, Sunny, uh, let's see, where do we start? First of all, I want to let people know that you are a member of my Master Heart Business Mentoring Group. And so we get to, you know, connect all the time and mm -hmm. continue to work on, on your business uh, throughout the rest of the year. And I'm excited for that. Um, one of the principles that you found, you've been finding helpful and you've been, you've been working on embodying, which is a little different than what's out there in the mainstream is uh, you know what, what's typically out there with regards to content, with regards to sharing our message, sharing our, our ideas, is intellectual property. Uh, we, we have to protect, protect, protect. We have to make sure that we are the only one who, <laughs> who, who, who has ever said this thing or whatever, and it shall, shall be the only one. But um, of course, now that you we've been working together for a bit, um, you are experimenting with a different way. Uh, which is, uh, but I'll let you, I'll let you share. Uh, yeah. With, yeah. Thank you. And it's interesting because yes, I, I received that message so much in the world. And there are some coaches who really even focus on that, right? Yeah. Protecting and developing yeah. your own intellectual property. And I remember hearing that you have, I don't know, some or all of your ideas in the, in the, what is it called? Creative Commons. And you know, and I really love that the the come from around that because I do think that there's so much that we can all offer to advance. Um, you know, our own uh, certainly our own fields, but also our own development. There's so much we have to learn from each other, and so I think that exchange feels really natural and compatible with my my work, which is around collaboration. Yeah. So I think that there's you know so much that can happen through sharing ideas and building upon each other's ideas and exchanging in that way. Totally. So I love totally. that you, you really yeah. advocate for that. I, I do. And I, I am, you know, I, I've been switching. I, I kind of switched my mindset around this. Uh, I think somewhere around 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. I used to believe that we should all, you know, just like most people protect ideas. And then, and then um, yeah, somewhere around 2014 or so I thought, wait a second, if I share it and not fear as much whether people take it and run with it, I find that I'm actually much more creative myself. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, with that kind of more of an open heart, I tend to draw people to me. It's interesting. People say, oh, don't you draw abusers of that policy? But no, actually, I draw people who are, tend to be more like collaborators and people who respect that I mean, people like you, right? So um, it's so interesting. And recently, I've been starting to tweet my potential blog ideas out there. I use Twitter. I used to use Twitter to try to put stuff out there, but now I use it to 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 share. Hey, this might be a blog idea in the future, and I just try to get it out there as much as possible and then see which ones work. But but you, uh, what I'm excited um, how you're starting to put this together is you you have a framework that you recently. Up, expanded, upgraded, and you're going to be sharing much more widely. Um, it's a bit of a tangent, but I think it is an example of sort of um, idea creation. Uh, do you want to say a bit more about your framework and why it's helping you to, you know, kind of organize mm -hmm. things? Yeah, yeah. 
And it's interesting because I do, I bring ideas from a few different fields and this is part of, you know, what's, what's developed into my framework. So the individual level, the interpersonal level, the organizational level and how they each feed into one another. So of course our individual, um, you know, our, our individual, um, you know, capacities and obstacles. So for example, if we have in psychology, what we might call cognitive distortions, then that's going to interfere with someone's ability to relate to another person, right? So there are ways in which each of these areas impact the other. And there are also stages of working through, you know, clarifying, defining, designing what we want to do going forward, really committing, um, you know, so there, there are stages that can be translated to each of those domains. And then I also think about the, as we're working on those, it's expanding the, the capacity on all of those levels of the system as a whole. So I kind of see it as like this funnel where the funnel is getting larger, the more that, that we do that work. And then of course there are some individuals and partners that don't actively do that work. And then there's like this contraction that happens. And, you know, so that's why I, 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 think, um, I think of it in three dimensions. Like really a, do you yeah. happen to have a screenshot of it that you can share but uh no i we'll we'll we'll, we'll come back we I'll, I'll let you if at some point if you're going to be sharing it on a blog post or your website or sure. something so people can see it then yeah. sorry to put you on the spot there but uh but i'm excited for it and that's why i and i've seen i've seen the uh the the initial design so i'm excited yeah. to for the world to see it so um so as you start getting the stuff out there um how do you feel about okay so i, I sh actually want to ask you about this like putting ideas out there can be scary right and mm -hmm. for for most people it is scary mm -hmm. uh, especially they aren't already prolific content creators so how are you dealing with that uh especially something like a framework that is so close to you, that means so much to you, it, it, it integrates your experiences, uh, your skills. How are you, yeah, relating to that, to that publishing yeah. of such a thing? Yeah, and, and I'll say I'm still in the process of that. So I, I'm sure. almost done with writing the framework article that I'll then share on LinkedIn and you know, other, other areas as well. Um, and I feel excited to do it, whereas you know, in the past, I noticed that I did feel more reticence around sharing ideas, but there's some, I guess, because this is so core, it feels like it, it integrates a lot of what I believe and want to see happen. So for example, people, people being more intentional about developing themselves in each of these areas, because I believe in it so strongly, it makes sense to share it, right? That's another way of serving people which is something that I, I really appreciate about your approach as well. So when I think of it in that way, it seems really natural and important to do. And so the, the kind of the ego fears of, oh, what are people gonna think about it? <laughs> um, you know, that that recedes. So I feel really excited about, about this, um, this approach. And what would you say to somebody who is, who is afraid? <laughs> to kind of put their ideas out there um, for various reasons. But let, let's just say for now, it's the fear of criticism, fear of this is not gonna be good enough. Mm -hmm. um, the fear that, uh, well, what if I change my mind? It's already out there. Um, what, 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 or also another one is what, what are my friends and family gonna think about this? Mm -hmm. um, what are your... Yeah. Well, I think that the first thing is that I do see it as an iterative process where we have one, and it, mine already has, my framework has already gone through some changes. You know, you had made a suggestion because originally I had nine stages. <laughs> you recommended reducing it down. And so I got it into, you know, in a sense, four different steps um, within the areas. And, you know, so the more that I notice that I, I put it out and get feedback, I certainly get the feedback about the things that do make sense in work and create more insights for others and ideas for them. And then any kind of constructive criticism that I get allows me to then think about how else I can adjust and refine it. 
which feels like it is within the, the larger context is within service, right? To be developing the ideas further. So I actually want it to change over time. I'm excited about that. And I think it will become increasingly useful for people the more that I put it out and get feedback. But I started small, right? So I just um, showed it to one of, you know, one of the other members of MasterHeart. Um, and that is one of the things that I love about this community is that there is so much generosity around um, sharing ideas and offering feedback when requested and things like that. And then I shared it within one of your classes and I got some more feedback. So, you know, starting small really helps to, I think for me to feel more comfortable about sharing it within a, with a larger audience but also, as I said, to refine it, to get it to a place where I feel even better about it as I'm sharing it with a larger audience. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think that, yeah, that's yeah, really great. helpful. Yeah, that is, those are good tips. And, and for those who, uh, who are listening or watching who are not in MasterHeart or are not in one of my classes, you can simply contact one of your friends and colleagues and say, uh, you know, could I, uh, could we have a kind of a temporary uh, project where uh, we can give each other feedback on what we're working on, uh, you know, just exchange emails or whatever it is. And of course, it has to be someone you're comfortable with. And, right? So um, the other thing that, you know, talk, speak, you know, speak, you know we're talk, we've been talking about abundance in sharing ideas and in collaboration. Uh, one of the other key shifts is from, from the idea of competitors um, you know, seeing others in our field as, well, if they have a client that have one less client for me or whatever it may be to, you know, what I call niche mates, right? It's like, mm -hmm. well, they, 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 they deserve success too. I mean, they, they have a family too, and, and they're doing good work too. And, and, uh, and, and if, if they grow uh, and, and we're friends, we'll probably grow together. <laughs> you know, um, what has been your experience as you've been Kind of bringing that idea of niche made into your and and you already I'm sure you were already quite collaborative before before we met but how are you and, and so you can share about your kind of collaboration insights uh, you know even before uh, we started working together but but uh, yeah I'd love to hear from you on that niche mates and kind of net caring absolutely well yes I I definitely did did have that attitude of collaboration before starting. Um, there were a number of people that I worked with on various projects or co-facilitated or co-consulted. Um, and then in, in others where we, um, you know, did give each other feedback around our ideas and, you know, blog posts and things like that before sharing with a larger community. But I remember, I think that you were the first one that I heard. I don't know that I've heard anyone else use the term niche mates before. And there's something about the way in which you presented that makes it feel um, like it like it is the default, right? That we can come from that place of assuming that everyone else is a niche mate. And even though I had that attitude, I didn't believe that other people did. So there is a way in which I felt more open to reaching out to even strangers within the field. And in this case, you know, as my caseload grew, I had to find other people that I trusted to um, give over flow clients to. So I did have to reach out to some new folks um, who had, you know, certain areas of specialization that were similar to mine. And, and it felt a lot more comfortable doing it with that kind of idea in mind that everyone can be having that attitude of, of um, you know, again, abundance and um, developing our ideas together and so I, I have felt more open in that way, like a lot more flow. Um, it's amplified where I came from. Mm. Yes, yes. And what would you say to somebody who, you know, recently I received um, a message, someone saying, you know, I, I, I would love to think in more in terms of niche mates and, and more collaborative net caring type, type thing. But, yeah. but she was talking about an experience where she, she felt like somebody had taken more from uh, a collaboration mm -hmm. than 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 they deserved, or uh, mm -hmm. that you know, and so there's always that concern people have to say, well, what if it's not perfectly equal, equal, or 
Right. Um, and it's, of course, interestingly, that's your field. Right? You, you like help, you know, business partners you know, deal with this kind of stuff. But, but yeah, any, any insights or reflections that you want to share from, from your experience? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because there is still a way in which I struggle with that piece to some degree. This idea that some people might want to take ideas and um, exploit it in some way and not also come from the perspective of generosity and collaboratively developing the field. So that that comes in a little bit, but I just I, I try to <laughs> um, I try to see it within the larger context, which is that if someone else, like say someone is uh, you know taking an idea and just using it for very selfish purposes, the ideas are still getting out there to a greater number of people. It's still like planting seeds that other people who are coming from a place of spirit and heart and generosity are gonna be able to benefit and to develop those further. So I think from that perspective, uh, it's, it's less of a concern. And, and I do believe, you know, even in my case, I'm working with you know, business partnerships. So in, in some sense, it's um, maybe a smaller population than some that, you know, that some other businesses might have. And yet there are way more clients that I could even imagine myself and everyone who does this work being able to serve. So, you know, this idea of, of scarcity doesn't make sense. I do like the idea of expanding the pie, meaning educating more people about these kinds of resources that are available so more people use them, right? I don't think that there's an issue of too few clients or too few ideas. And I also really liked what you had said before that, um, you know, by the time someone sees one of your ideas, you're already past that. You're already developing something new. Right, so in that way, I, I feel more at ease about um, just letting go of that yeah. fear when it comes up. I love that. It, it's, yeah, I mean, and I think this egoless, you know, perspective of valuing the ideas more than taking credit for it mm -hmm. um, has, I'd say, I mean, almost like a magical karmic return uh, even in this life, I would say uh, that that it's hard to well measure <laughs> or take credit for. Um, you know, it's it, but it does. Yeah, you and I have both kind of experienced that, and um, and yeah, there are people who are still growing. You know, <laughs> there are people who are still young, and 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 who's who may who may be more you know need, needing to take credit or things like that, and that's okay because yeah, yeah. like yeah, like yeah, you've discovered ideas are abundant, you're going to keep creating. So yeah. as you think about um, your business kind of going forward, I'm just kind of taking a little bit of a step back and, mm -hmm. and you have, you have, you have a, you're, you know, it's great. For, well, maybe actually, before I even go to the step back, you mentioned already that you have a gratefully a full caseload or client load, right at this time. Do you want to say a few words about how that came to be, or, or uh, sure. what? What can those who are listening? Um, how how can yeah how how can we get there too? <laughs> right, like like yeah. Any any encouragement there? Yeah, I think I think the first piece was that I did an exercise where I really thought about this idea of niche. I was very resistant to the idea of niching when I first started. And it took me a while, and I don't remember all the steps that started to convince me, but one is, you know, I am trained as a therapist, as well as an organization development consultant. So in the therapy domain, in the therapy realm in particular, there are so many generalists. And when I'm looking for a client to refer, and someone says they have, you know, certain issue, they have problems sleeping, I do want to refer to that person to someone who specializes in the issue that they have. And others who are generalists, I don't think of them at that time. They might be fantastic therapists or fantastic coaches. So there's something about the, this, um, the niching that I've realized on the other side of it is really helpful for me referring to others. And then also being on, on my side of it of getting the clarity and I got the clarity through doing an exercise of 
thinking about every client I've ever worked with, which has been, I don't, I don't know, it's in the hundreds, right? So some of them are organizational clients, foundations, school districts, you know, um, individual therapy clients, couple therapy clients, just all the different kinds of work. And I thought, who have I most enjoyed working with? Where did I feel like I was able to bring my most skill? Who did, did I feel benefited the most? Who I, was I able to be the most creative with? So I did that exercise to narrow it down to the top. I think it was three to five clients, like individual clients. And, and from there, I was able to see that this is the work. It's the business partners. And I'll also mention that in the business partners, I have a subspecialty of working with business partners who also have a personal relationship of being siblings or close friends or spouses. And, and that's what I found when I did this exercise is that doing the business partnership coaching that brings my therapy background and the organization to background and the mediation. And I facilitate an interpersonal dynamics class for MBA. So I thought about all the different pieces and I can be so creative. So there's something about the, the niche itself, like identifying the niche. And I also thought, who would I wanna be able to, who would I be so interested in working with that I could develop 10 years worth of material for them and never get bored. So, you know, getting- I love this. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, it, it's actually similar to kind of what I've been trying to, trying to teach people for years. It's like, I feel like a lot of people niche too early. Mm. And I mean, your story is a fantastic example because you already did a lot of work. You already worked with hundreds of clients before you niched. Right. And that made it so much more effective because it's grounded in your actual experience analysis of history rather than a projection into an unknown future. Right. And, and so it's like for people who are just starting out, I always recommend, all right, because you don't have the history of experience working with hundreds of people like Sunny has, you can essentially create content, create hopefully a couple hundred pieces of content, but even a couple dozen pieces and then niche from there to say, well, which of my content has been getting the most traction? You know, anyway, but I, I'm excited. Uh, thank you for, for sharing that, that example because I'll be able to share your example going forward. We only have a few minutes left, unfortunately. Sure. So um, I'd love for you to share. Um, well, I mean, I think you've already mentioned who's your ideal client and kind of what kind of stuff you do with them, but <laughs> give us a bit of a sense of your vision of your business. What would you like as your business continues to impact more people Mm -hmm. um, what does the business look like? Uh, or, or maybe, you know what, what, let's end on this. How, what, what, what would the world be like as what the kind of stuff you do becomes more prevalent? <laughs> what would the world be like? Um, you know, so much of it, so much of my focus is on how we evolve individually and collectively and certainly within the work domain where we spend most of our time and need to be able to bring as much of ourselves forward and need to develop ourselves as much as possible in order to make as much of that difference as we can. So that's what I would love to see is for, you know, for everyone to be, um, you know, working through all of the obstacles that keep them from bringing their fullness and from working with others to further their own mission, because we really need it. It's just such an interdependent world. And, you know, even with, as we're talking about ideas, you know, but certainly so many other ways in which we collaborate and can use resources, share resources. And um, so that's what I would love to see is for more people to be able to follow their true mission in that way and create the businesses um, and the, the relationships, the collaborations that are gonna be bettering everyone. That's fantastic. Sonia Sabini, thank you so much for taking part in this uh, interview. And uh, pleasure. I hope thank those you. who are watching or listening will check out the notes um, where they can find links to your website and uh, any other links that uh, you feel would be relevant for them. So thanks, Sunny. Fantastic, thank you.